everyone. My name is Jan. I'm the technical advisor for the XEC 737 team. And today I'd like to show you some uh, work we've done already on the pneumatic air conditioning system. All you see here is still a work in progress, especially the graphics. So uh, don't get worried too much. And um, the aircraft is in a state where it's on the ground, engines are running, it's uh, fully powered electrically. Okay, so let's start. First thing I'm going to do is I'll start the APU and uh, you can see the little mouse hand grab the switch, flip it to start, it uh, automatically spring loads back to on. You can see the EGT rise, the low air pressure light is still on until it's turning fast enough to create enough oil pressure, the EGT will peak, come back down and eventually the blue light will come on means that uh, we could use that to power the aircraft electrically. Now I turn on the APU bleed on the right side, you can see both duct pressures rise. The left and the right side have uh, separate pointers. And um, there's the isolation valve, I close it and you can see the right duct pressure is dropping down to zero again, only the left side is pressurized now. Now I turn on the right pack and as you'd expect nothing happens because the right side is not pressurized. I turn on the left pack, duct pressure drops a little bit, put it on high, drops even more. All this is modeled correctly and um, if I open the isolation valve, turn it to auto, it automatically opens in this setting and if I then turn on the right pack, the duct pressure drops even a little bit more. Now I put the left pack back to auto, which would be a normal setting for this stage. Passengers just boarding and let's look at the temperature up here. The passenger cabin has about 22 degrees. Let's turn it up a little bit. I'm moving both pack temperature selectors to warm and you can see the air mix valves on above that. They're not moving much and the reason is that the packs are already supplying hot air as best as they can. You can see that if I turn off the recirculation fan, the temperature indication in the supply duct rises even more. The recirculation fan keeps adding back air into the mix manifold that uh, gives us a wrong temperature. So if I turn it off, you'll see the supply duct temperature a little bit better. Now, if we'd wait a minute, the passenger cabin temperature would rise. It's at 22 and a bit right now but uh, let's not make this too long. I'm turning this back to cold. You can see the air mix valve is moving to full cold. Not the right one though, because the pack is not running. And if you look at the supply duct temperature now, you can see it drop fairly quickly. That's what we like to see in the summer. And um, now as I turn on the right pack, the air mix valve is moving as well. Now the APU is supplying bleed air for both packs for cooling. That's not really recommended on the ground because it places really high load on the APU. So what I'm doing now is I'll close the isolation valve and I'll use the right engine bleed to power the right pack. Engines are already running and I turn that on and you see the pressure rise in the right duct but it's not going as high as the left duct because the engine is at idle right now not putting out too much bleed air. So uh, let's change that. I will rev up the engine. You can see the N1 go up. You see the throttle even thrust levers at the bottom move a bit and um, the duct pressure rises accordingly. But let's put that power back to idle because I don't want to endanger everyone. This is all modeled correctly even if we go up to a higher altitude. Air gets thinner, duct pressure gets less and so on. Now I'm turning on the left engine bleed. There's an orange light, the dual bleed light. That means that pressure from the engine could go back into the APU. That's dangerous. On the ground we can do it with idle power. See the recall? I press the recall, the alert comes on again, I can cancel it with a master caution. And if I turn off the APU bleed, the dual bleed situation is gone and also the warning lights are gone on the master caution panel. So I'm turning off the left engine bleed as well. The left duct pressure is dropping to zero because the left, pack, uh, left duct system is not pressurized. Back to auto, both are pressurized and you can see the temperature already dropped to just above 20. We're trying to model this correctly with outside air temperature, with doors open, doors closed. All this has influence on the temperature development. So this concludes this little preview. Stay tuned for more to come.